So in this video, we're going to look at common problems with starting diesel engines. We're going to look at cold start problems and warm start problems. And there's a, a degree of overlap between the typical things that cause you to have cold start issues and warm start issues. We're going to look at typical components that would contribute to starting problems. And once we've discussed all of the components and all of the potential problems, we're going to look at some specifics. So we're going to use the Volkswagen TDI engines as a base because they work in a very similar way to many other engines and they're engines that I'm relatively familiar with. So just looking at some of the nuances and idiosyncrasies with these engines, and hopefully this video will just give you a few pointers on places to look and investigate before you just start randomly throwing money at your diesel engine because you've got starting issues and never really getting a fix on the problem itself. And at the end of the video, you'll have a good grasp on the working principles of a diesel engine and the typical areas that need to be addressed if you're starting to get starting problems, be them cold or warm starting issues and you'll be able to help your mates out with your newfound knowledge. <laughs> So when it comes to tuning diesel engines, they're very different to their gasoline or petrol counterparts. So with a petrol engine, you basically need air, fuel, and spark. Are you getting the correct air and fuel mix? Are you getting a spark? If you've got problems starting a, a petrol or gasoline engine, it's typically those three areas. So it's relatively easy to diagnose those things. But with the way a diesel engine works, it's very different. It doesn't use a spark to ignite that air and fuel charge. It uses compression of the engine and that compression generates heat and that heat starts the burn. And it's a very efficient way of burning fuels. That is generally why you get a lot more fuel economy out of a diesel engine. So modern diesel engines are very much controlled by the ECU and that can actually help with diagnosing problems because most diesel faults will indicate some sort of error code when you plug a diagnostic reader into the OBD port. So once you've got the error code, that will generally indicate where there's a fault. It might indicate there's a glow plug issue, a cranking issue, or a problem on one of the cylinders. So that can certainly help you to start looking in the right direction. So your first port of call is always to pull off the error codes, reset them, and just check if any new error codes come up because that will really, really aid your diagnosis. So fuel problems are quite common on diesel engines, and there's a few different areas to look at. The fuel filter, is obviously a key component in your fuel system. And if that filter has become clogged, the fuel just physically won't be able to flow very well to the injectors. And bear in mind that diesel engines work under intensely high fuel pressures. So any loss of pressure in the system anywhere can cause substantial problems when it comes to delivering the right amount of fuel to the engine. As fuel gets cold, it tends to gel, so it loses its fluidity. Now there's inhibitors within your diesel fuel when you buy it to prevent this from happening, but some grades of diesel are, are worse than others. And if you've had the diesel sitting in your tank for quite a long time, it may well have degraded. So you may have a problem with your fuel and it may not be a problem at all with the engine. So always check that you've brimmed the tank with a decent quality fuel and that will hopefully just rule out the problem with fuel issue. Now leaking injectors can also be a problem. Now bear in mind that on a common rail system, the rail is pressurized and the injectors are each pressurized and they work just by releasing the pressure and the fuel flows out of one of them. So if you've got a leaky injector anywhere in the system, it's going to affect the fuel delivery to each of the injectors within that system. So check those injectors for leaks because you can substantially be down on fuel just by having minor leaks in each of your four injectors, assuming you've got a four cylinder engine. There's also a load reduction relay that cuts in when you start the engine. And basically what that does, it isolates all non-essential systems and just allows the engine to have full power for starting. So the power will obviously go to the engine and the starter and it will be cut off from the lights and the in-car entertainment system and all the other components within the car. So if that relay is not working, it may just be that the current drain is too great and you're not getting enough cranking power through the starter motor. We've got a little bit more on that later. You've done your OBD error code report. The next thing you should start to look at is actually the sound the engine is making. So being familiar with the sound your engine should be making and the change when you start it, and particularly noting where the noise is coming from. So a rattling sound from the engine itself 
is often caused by premature ignition of the fuel in the cylinders. And that can actually cause major problems and major damage. So that's certainly something you would want to address. So ticking noises, there's a lot of moving components within the engine, the pistons, the crank, the various other systems driven by the crank, including the camshaft and in a lot of cases, the fuel pump itself. So the ticking noise will generally adjust itself depending on the engine speed. And you can usually pinpoint roughly in the engine where that ticking noise is coming from. So if it's in the top of the engine, you know to address your investigations to there. If it's deep down in the engine or off to one side, you've got other problems there. So note especially where the ticking noise is coming from because that can really help you to track down the problems. So you've generally got a timing chain at the side of the engine connecting the crank to the camshafts. And in a lot of diesel engines that also drives the fuel pump. So metal timing chains are very much prone to stretching. They're doing a lot of work. This is a problem that settles when the engine is warm or is more noticeable when it's cold. It could well be an issue with the timing chain itself and that can have a knock-on effect so if that's your problem do have a look at that and investigate it and sort it out. Another really obvious thing and I feel so patronizing saying this check the fuel levels your fuel gauge may be faulty it may be telling you you've got fuel in the tank but actually your tank is empty it's one of the most easy things to overlook or forget about in an engine and you will feel I know I have pretty stupid when it turns out you've just not got enough fuel in the engine and you've tried all these diagnostics and everything else so just make sure there is fuel in the tank itself because if it's got no fuel, it's not going to start. So cold start problems. This is where the engine will not start or has great difficulty starting on cold mornings or when the engine has not been run for a substantial period of time. So when you first turn on the ignition, you'll notice a little glow plug light coming on on the dashboard. So the glow plug is effectively a little rod inside the engine that gets very, very hot and starts to glow. And in cold temperatures, you may struggle to get enough heat to start that ignition process in the engine itself. So the glow plug actually raises the cylinder temperatures. So the intake air and fuel are at a high enough temperature to combust when the compression is at the correct point. So most garages will actually replace the glow plugs as soon as they hear about cold start issues because it is quite a common thing. But actually you should check your glow plugs. You can test if they're working or not. If you just put a voltmeter between them and the power supply and just check they are getting enough voltage. So if your engine always struggles on very cold mornings but on warmer days it's not struggling to start and you have no trouble at all starting the engine when it's warm it could well be the glow plugs so get them tested and checked and if there's a sign that they're not getting enough voltage or they're not doing their job properly replace them it's a relatively cheap fix for most cars although they can be a real pig. So the battery is a critical component in your car engine it needs to deliver enough power for that starter motor to to crank the engine itself and turn it over. It also fires up all the other systems within the engine. So if there is a problem with the voltage, it's going to affect so many different areas of the car. And on a cold day, the battery voltage will generally drop. So you might have a battery that's working perfectly well in the warm weather, but as soon as that temperature starts to drop, the battery efficiency will degrade and that working battery that was only just working is now going to fail on you in the winter. And that's probably why there's so many breakdowns and call outs to breakdown associations in winter due to battery problems. It's not because the batteries have all failed at the same time due to their age, it's because the temperature is sufficiently low to expose the weakness in the battery itself. So we'll mention this later, but um, most diesel engines require a certain RPM speed to be met before it will start the firing up process with the fuel and air delivery in the engine itself. So if it's not getting enough cranking power and it's not able to get the optimum RPM to start, it will just not start. And that will typically manifest itself in long start problems. And if your battery is starting to get down, you may well run out of juice before you can get the engine properly started. That's why it's a good idea to dip the clutch on most diesel engines when you actually start them. It just reduces the load from the transmission in the engine itself. So the starter motor is only turning the engine. So a simple checklist really that we should put up just to 
diagnose cold start problems. The first one is to check that the battery is properly connected and it's in a good state. So bad earth connections can cause all sorts of intermittent faults with the car. It's not generally limited to starting issues. So if you're getting other problems in the electrical system of the car, it could well be the battery or the connections to and from the battery or a short somewhere in the system. So in some cold climates, people actually use battery warmers. It's interesting that at zero degrees Fahrenheit, a battery can lose up to 60% of its power. At 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it can lose about 35% of its power. So just warming that battery up will certainly help to improve its efficiency and may just lift you over that threshold of not being able to start your diesel engine. So that's for people that live in really, really cold climates. And we've had some really extreme cold weather lately, so that may apply to you this year, whereas in previous years, you've not been worried about it. So check the glow plugs are functioning properly. Check the voltage. They should be getting 12 volts when they kick in. If they're not getting the full 12 volts or there's some sort of problem with the circuit there, you need to address that and just make sure that's fixed because those glow plugs are really vital on cold days. I always recommend to people to actually wait for the glow plug light to go out when they start their engine, just to get into a habit. On most modern diesels and in most environments, you can get away with just starting the engine but it's just good practice to get into just to check your dashboard lights as you turn the ignition key and just make sure everything settles before you actually turn the starter. So we've spoken about the cranking ability of the engine. So if you've got the wrong grade of oil, it will not reduce the friction to the point where the engine can effectively start itself. So you may need to switch grades of oil turn off all non-essential car functions. So most engines have got a function that isolates the circuits it needs to start the engine. But if that isolator is not quite working properly, or there's some other issue in the system, it certainly would be good practice just to turn off all of the systems in the car and just see if it starts okay now. And if it does, you've again helped to isolate the problem to that isolation circuit that helps to prevent the voltage draining when you actually start the car and need all the power in the starter. So fuel additives, can also be useful. So if you're starting to get gel forming in the fuel, the fuel is not flowing at the correct rate, you could have all sorts of problems with it not burning, not even getting into the engine in some cases. So an additive, an anti-gelling agent is the most common additive that people would use in winter in their fuel. But to be honest, most manufacturers do this at the pump. And unless you're living in very extreme climates, it's probably not something you need to worry about. If it's something that you've experienced, drop us a note in the comments. I'd love to hear Hear from you. We don't get extremely cold weather here in the UK, particularly down here in the south. They call us softies for a reason. We really don't like the cold weather. So your car is designed to operate within a certain temperature range. That's the way the engine was set up, the map from the factory, the components used, the type of injectors, and everything has been set up for an operating range. So if you suddenly drop outside of that ideal operating range and you've got extremely warm conditions or extremely cold conditions, it could just require a bit of an adjustment in the ECU of the car just to prevent the problems that you're getting with starting. But again, that's something that only affects you if you've had sudden drastic changes in the weather conditions. So we're moving on now to warm start problems. So this is where you've had the engine running and you're just getting trouble getting that engine going again. So when the engine gets excessively hot, it can prevent an efficient combustion process from taking place. Pressure generally increases as temperature increases. So in hot hot weather or a very hot engine bay, the fuel, the air going into the engine may be hotter than what the car was originally designed for. So almost all modern engines use some kind of fuel injection system. And as I said earlier, they are running at extremely high fuel pressures. So anything that's going to affect those pressures, either pushing them too high or causing vaporization somewhere in the fuel system, you're going to have problems with warm starting issues. So the fuel pump is also sensitive to temperatures. It's got its optimum temperature range. And if that's getting too hot, it may well be less effective at pumping fuel at the required pressure. So some owners, particularly of these Volkswagen diesel engines, have reported that they've got to wait four or five minutes to allow the engine to cool down before they can start it again. So they quite commonly have warm start issues as the mileage starts creeping up. So what are the common causes behind this? Well, the first and most common thing that crops up is relay 
109. What is this mysterious Relay 109? What does it do? So Relay 109 basically sends power to every sensor in the engine and also supplies power to the ECU. Now, the earlier versions of Relay 109 tended to get very hot in operation, which led to intermittent problems before it ultimately failed and cut out and let you down while you were driving along. So there's a newer version of Relay 109, which is better built. It's got heavier duty components inside it. It doesn't run as hot. It can tolerate the heat better and it's much better at lasting the duration. So if you're getting these intermittent problems, it could well be down to that Relay 109 problem. But there's quite a lot going on inside a diesel engine at the startup point. And it's just good to just make sure that all of these circuits are working exactly as they were intended to. So sometimes a bad map can cause all sorts of starting issues. So if your car is getting on a bit, it's started to age, you may well need to adjust the map inside to just cope with its age and the degradation or, or fix the problems that were causing that in the first place. But if you've had it remapped, you may well be pushing much more power than the engine was originally designed. And now it is struggling to start. So getting the ECU adjusted slightly can help lift the car from not being able to start when it's warm or cold to being able to start quite happily when it's warm or cold. So in a lot of the Volkswagen Group diesel engines, the ECU will not fire the injectors until you've reached 300 RPMs on the starter. So if the starter motor has degraded, if the starter motor is not getting enough voltage or the engine itself is not moving as freely as perhaps it should be, it won't reach the 300 RPM and it won't crank and start the fuel system. So it again is not going to start. So that will typically cause long cranking times. Now often when you've cranked an engine for a while, it started to warm up a little bit, you've got things going and freed up and then it will happily start. So you'll generally experience a bit of a deterioration over time. So these starting issues will start to get more and more pronounced or they may hit you on cold days or on warm days. Note very carefully the pattern because that can help diagnose where the problem is typically located in your fuel system or your car's ignition system or your car's ECU or engine. So I've not gone into too much detail here with all of the, the nerdy parameters that are going on in the ECU and what it's looking at and fuel pressures and everything. Assume that diesel engines are very complex. They don't run at a very set ratio of air to fuel. There's a big variation in the air to fuel mixtures depending on what the engine's doing and what the conditions are, which is completely different to a gasoline engine. And just as a result of that, the whole engine setup is far more complex. So that can make tracking these problems down much more difficult. But don't get ripped off by a garage just wanting to replace the glow plugs. Ensure that they're actually tested and checked before because eight out of 10 times cold start issues are related to things other than the glow plugs. And glow plugs can be quite expensive, especially if you're getting a garage to replace them. And there's a lot of cheap fixes. So those little relays in the engine are usually the cause of the problems and they can relatively easily tested and diagnosed. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If you've had cold start issues or warm start issues, drop us in the comments what your experiences were, what you did to fix it. Did you enjoy this video? Would it have been useful in you diagnosing the problem? Have I missed anything out? If I have, let me know and I'll address that in a future video. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.